This is this is this is. Welcome, 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 you guys. Welcome to the first episode of 2023. It's January 2nd, 2023. It's going to take me a while to, you know, write my checks with the right year. Do you guys know about that? Writing checks? I don't really write a lot of checks either, but (laughs) it is now the future. We're in 2023, and I am going to listen to some voicemails, answer some questions, talk about some topics, and please, please... Check out mxpeaks.com, write in. Uh, if you want to leave a voicemail for future episodes, please do that. The number is 360-830-6660. So that's 830-6660, area code 360. That's a lot of zeros, a lot of sixes, a lot of threes. All right, we're good. <laughs> One eight. Um, all right, you guys. Brand new episode, 441. It's just me and you. So I thought I would prepare a nice 2023 speech, say goodbye to 2022. I mean, good riddance to it, right? Like everybody wants to just look forward. We don't need to look into the past. But as I was uh, about to do this podcast, um, a buddy of mine sent me some, he's like, you know about, chat gpt right and i'm like yeah but i've never tried it i've, I've been thinking about trying it but like, how hard is it to set up he's like, pretty easy pretty easy so he's like it's a trip man I, I i told it to to write some mxpx lyrics for me and it did it did so it, it, for those of you that don't know what chat gpt is uh I don't either. So <laughs> it's a it's an open source, which means free for now, at least until they figure out how to make money on it. And I'm sure they're going to. But um, it's a, a website you go to. You can sign up. You can ask this AI. It's like a bot, like a chat bot, really. It's like a chat bot, but it's way better than your average chat bot that you would encounter on a corporate website. So. I'll read you some lyrics in a minute, but I want, I wanted to I wanted to show you guys what I wrote. I didn't actually write it. What I prompted it to write. So I signed up for it and I asked it to write me a speech to say on my podcast about the end of the year, 2022, and the beginning of the new year for the My Career Podcast audience and include the left coast punk band MXPX with a new album coming sometime in 2023. A thank you for calling in with great stories and fun questions. That's it's a run on sentence that I, that I wrote just like literally as I was trying to figure it out. And this is what it came, it comes back instantaneously. So hello, Mike Herrera audience. This is to you. As we come to the end of, uh, the year 2022, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on all that has happened in the past year and to express my gratitude to all of you for being part of this journey with me. Now, I didn't write that, but I I feel that. This is parentheses, this is me talking. All right, back to it. First and foremost, I want to thank you for calling in with such great stories and fun questions. Your participation and engagement truly make this podcast what it is, and I appreciate each and every one of you. That's also true. This is me talking again. I also wanted to give a special shout-out to the left coast punk band MXPX. Wait, what? (laughs) Okay, I didn't quite understand that, and that was my fault for prompting it in a weird way. Um, This is me talking. All right, back to it. So... I know many of you have been eagerly anticipating their new album, and I'm excited to announce that it will be coming sometime in 2023. That's this year. Keep an eye out for updates, and I can't wait for you all to hear it. As we move into the new year, I am looking forward to continuing to bring you all great content and connecting with you all through this podcast. Thank you again for your support, and I wish you all a happy and healthy new year. Take care. Your name. Me. So please do call us, leave a message. 
360-830-6660. Um, I'm, I'm working, you know, I, I don't put out every single question that comes out on the podcast. So I do, I do try to pick the best questions. Um, and so I appreciate you guys for, for calling in, leaving messages. I love it. It's fun. It's great. Um, mxpeaks.com. Of course, if you, if you've been listening to the podcast or if this is your first time listening to the podcast, please subscribe, rate, review any, any of that would be great. And, uh, 2023, here we are, we're doing it. And chat GPT is, is leading the way into the future. It's so crazy that this, this is how people write term papers now, you know, like I couldn't imagine being a student right now in the year 2023. And I mean, I guess I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm always learning things, so I guess I can kind of imagine it, but how do you really learn? I mean, this to me, it's like, I am never going to like, re yes. I, if I was going to write a book, how many people are writing books with chat AI? Like write me a book and then it just, okay, that's by me. You know, like, uh, this gets me to the song lyrics. Like these song lyrics are obviously not lyrics I wrote, but they sound kind of eerily similar to what I might write. Not quite as good, not as good. Let's just be clear about that, people. It's a robot. It's not going to be as good as me. <laughs> Maybe it can beat me at chess. But here's, uh, here's some lyrics he wrote or the, the AI bot wrote. Um, verse one, MXP song, verse one. I'm feeling lost and I don't know what to do. I'm trying to find my way through this crazy world. I'm searching for something that I can't find. I'm feeling like I'm spinning round and round. Chorus. I need a little bit of MXPX to keep me alive. Okay. Uh, outro. I need a little bit of MXPX in my life. I need a little bit of punk rock to keep me alive. I need a little bit of MXPX in my life. Need a little bit of punk rock keep me alive. Need a little MXPX in my life. I need a little punk rock to keep me alive. I figure that's probably what it is, something like that. Hope these lyrics work for you. Let me know if you have any revisions or additional ideas. <laughs> No, I will not be using this program to write lyrics for the new new songs. Um, crazy world. That just changed. There's so many people that are going to use that. Um, he also sent me some Goldfinger lyrics, which are very interesting because it's like, wait, what? Okay, you'll just see. Um, this, this is kind of spot on a lot. You know, if you listen to the, the mo most recent couple albums, um, sure. Some here are some lyrics for a Goldfinger song. Verse one. This is from the chatbot. I'm driving down the highway, feeling alive. The sun is shining bright. Everything's right. I've got the radio on, blasting out the tunes. I'm living for the moment. Nothing to lose. It's not bad. That's kind of fun. Like if, if it was like with the right music, it would sound just like John's lyrics. You know. Uh, chorus. This is the sound of Goldfinger. <laughs> okay. Chorus. Here, I'm starting over. This is the sound of Goldfinger. We're here to rock your world. We're bringing the party. We're bringing the heat. We're the kings of the scene. We're unstoppable. Like, where does that come from? Unstoppable. This is the sound of Goldfinger. We're unstoppable. Like, hello, already a song called Unstoppable. Uh, all right. Uh, of course, they're going to use that stuff. Verse two, still good, still good. Verse two, I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the groove. This is me singing usually because I sing a lot of the, the verse twos for Goldfinger now. <laughs> so it'd be me singing. I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the groove. I'm dancing in my seat. I'm ready to move. I've got the rhythm in my blood. I, I screwed that up. I got the rhythm in my blood. I can't sit still. I'm living for the music. It's all I feel. Chorus. This is the sound of Goldfinger. We're here to rock your world. We're bringing the party. We're bringing the heat. We're the kings of the sing, uh, scene. We're unstoppable. <laughs> Go, we're, this is the sound of Goldfinger. We're unstoppable. Bridge. I mean, a full song? Like, really? All right. 
uh, bridge. We're breaking all the rules. We're making our own way. We're living for the thrill. We're living for the day. We're unstoppable. We're unstoppable. This is the sound of Goldfinger. Oh, this is the outro. We're here to rock your world. We're bringing the party. We're bringing the heat. We're the kings of the scene. This is the sound of Goldfinger. We're unstoppable. That's like the chorus, but okay, I get it. The outro chorus. Uh, I hope these lyrics work for you. Let me know if you have any revisions or additional ideas. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. This is going to change. It's going to change a lot in our world. And it's already a crazy world. <sighs> Pretty cool, though. Um, all of my podcast questions will now be written by ChatGPT. I mean, that's just straight up, right? Like, if I ever have a guest on again, we'll see. <laughs> so it's so hard for me to to commit to, um, you know, scheduling and then also other people's schedules just nuts, you know, like, um, that's it. It's just hard. It's hard to schedule. I think that's, that's what 2022 taught me. It's very hard to schedule. But, um, what did 2022 teach me? Whoa. Whoa. Just dropped my phone. <laughs> there you see it there for everyone. Um, what did 2022 teach me? That's a, I wasn't prepared to ask myself this question, um, because I just asked myself the question, but, um, you know, I think without getting too deep planning, you know, I, I've been terrible at planning for mo all of my life. And, you know, a lot of you are like, wait, I thought you were good at planning. No, I'm not. I'm not great at planning. I'm not, I'm, I'm good at doing things. I'm good at getting, getting work done, getting the job done, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. But planning and yeah, it really got me. I won't go into the details, but uh, I've learned a lot about how to manage a team, how to manage not just a team myself and how to go about doing the business that, that we do. It's just like things are growing with MXPX. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, just a little bit here, you know, it's like, it's not like it's like drastically bigger, but just some things are, are growing to where changes need to be made along the supply chain kind of things, um, along, uh, personnel, you know, more responsibilities for people, you know, so 22 was, a a year that we were just, we meaning, I guess, MXPX, but we're, uh, just trying to keep up with learning and 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 figuring out new technologies and new new ways to do things and of course working on the new app new album you know that was a biggie and uh it will be out in 2023 um we are <laughs> i don't want to say anything more about it but uh this is another thing planning like it's like we've been planning yet it's just like things take so long that's another thing that's really changed over the last couple of years is things even if you have the idea to do it getting said projects done or it's so hard it's so hard and and it doesn't mean it's not worth doing it just it costs more it takes more time uh it, sometimes it takes more people depending on what we're talking about um i was looking into buying a console in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. And I was just like, I don't know anybody in Jacksonville. And then I was like, no, I do. And, uh, you know, I was texting a few people and they're like, oh, just blah, 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 I live in F Jacksonville. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So I texted my buddy and he's like, yeah, whatever you need, no problem. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the unknown because it's something that, you know, I was like, no, I, I put the kibosh on it. Long story short. And I was like, you know what? Thank you for your time. I'm not going to do this. We're, we're looking elsewhere. I'm going to get something that'll ship to me. So, so I'm still in the process of that, by the way, but, um, we're working on getting some new gear and I'm, I'm having a, a console shipped and, and we're going to do some new studio upgrades this year and nothing crazy, crazy, just a few, few basic things that I think will make everything more solid. It's all, it's all about making things solid. And, and a lot of that is like maintenance. Like right now the studio is leaking rain rain leaking out of the, the the roof in our studio it's not on the the gear or anything like that it's in the hallway but 
red flag. I mean, that's not a good thing. So <laughs> I don't want to. I've already made an appointment with the roof doctor. We're, we're good. They're on their way um, in two days. So, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, um, all we can do is is when we find a problem, find a leak, plug that hole. And and I think that's what 2022 was for, for a lot of us, was finding leaks and patching those leaks. Um, you know, that has to happen in our life. I mean, there's often, I'll, and I don't like to complain, but I'll, I'll find myself complaining about, in my mind, in my own mind, inner dialogue, complaining about having to do the most basic things. Like, we get finished I get finished cleaning the studio, it's dirty again. I get finished cleaning the house every, not that I clean the house, my wife cleans the house, but I vacuum the house every week and and every week it ha it's dirty. You know, literally the next day it's dirty, you know, because we live our lives. And, and, and I don't want to live my life with not being able to go in that one room. You know, did your parents have a room when you were a kid? Or, you, or maybe not your parents, but I didn't have... In my house, I didn't have one, but my friends did. So I'd go over to my friend's house and they'd have what would be a living room, but wasn't the TV room. It was just the sitting room. And so like people would go only for company, only for this or that. So like you weren't allowed to go and sit on that couch. You weren't allowed to go in there without your shoes off. Um, that <laughs> I don't want to live my life like that. And I, I just have to, we all have to kind of just accept that Chore, the chores of life the, and I should write that down to remind myself the chores of life because if we learn if we learn how, not we don't have to enjoy it but we, we just learn that's just part of the process and it's going to make your life more organized and 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 less clunky Jeez, I mean we always wait till the new year to start thinking about these things but I think it's just a natural a natural break in time to give yourself a little grace and, and a lot of people say don't do new year's resolutions or that or do whatever you want right like be yourself right do you um if that's how you get it done then that's how you get it done me i used to do that sure but now i think about it before and i start now or whatever you know like when i think of something i try to start it and if i don't it rattles around in my head for a while until I actually do. So, you know, whatever it takes, if it's the new year, boom. If, if it takes January to be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go dry January. I'm not going to drink alcohol for a month. Use it because that's sober October, right? Like it's a thing. It's a thing. No shave November. <laughs> yeah. All right, ladies go for it. I don't care. Do you do you? Um, what I'm saying is whatever it takes to better yourself, I, I say take advantage of that. And, and maybe this chat GPT stuff are, is going to make me better at planning. Maybe it's going to be like, okay, it's going to take some stress off the fact that I want to say something to my audience. And I wrote the prompt that was what I wanted to say to the audience. And then the, 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 you know, the chat GPT wrote it kind of better you know it's like more generic more better now i'm not gonna like i said i'm not gonna use this to like write songs and, and things like that but like it's kind of fun as long as it's not smoke and mirrors if i'm telling you <laughs> this is written by a chat bot then it's kind of cool it's kind of like all right cool you know let's do some homework <laughs> you know like that's the thing is you're not supposed to ask these chats for advice. You're supposed to ask me, me for advice. So like people are going to stop calling in. All the calls are going to dry up. By the way, my eyes are really watering. That's, they, they seem really red right now. I, I'm like, I get really emotional almost when I think about, I think about anything important and, and, and I think about the big things in life. And I think just the chaos of life and the, and the chores of life and the fact that nothing nothing waits life goes on every single day and this chat gpt is is the perfect example is that, like we're moving forward whether whether you like it or not and i don't like it most of the time i, I will admit um 
I don't consider myself an old head. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with it, but, uh, I'm not as with it as, is uh, you know, my, my kids are probably going to be in a couple of years, but, but that's the thing is like, I still pay attention to like the, the breakthroughs that are happening. There's a lot of medical breakthroughs. There's a lot of technological breakthroughs. Um, and this of course is going to be used for evil. I'm sure. But I am a very positive person. Uh, I have that good outlook on life. Yeah, I just, I feel like every time I have that negative inner dialogue, I push that aside eventually, you know, and, and get through it, you know. So I'm going to keep rolling with that in 2023. Uh, the new album is uh, it's going to be on the way. We're going to get some some vinyl pressed and, and uh yeah, I mean, like we're we're really we're really really putting everything I think we have into this new album as far as uh, our time, our energy, our plans for the future. Um, with that, will come. I'm sure we'll do some shows. You know, like so. I don't know. It's just it's a it's a lot looming in the future, and all I can do right now is just work on the stuff every day. Like I said a couple weeks ago, a little bit every day. Um, makes you, you know, gain some progress and, and that's how I've been doing it. So a little bit every day. Uh, and I'm sure the same, same happened with chat GPT until like one day they're just like, it works, it works. So we got a lot of repairs to do here at the studio, um, fixing our, our pro tools rig, fixing our live stream rig a little bit. I, I don't like my inner setup. Like I, I want to tweak some things. So, um, there's a lot of work to be done around these parts and and uh i'm still going to be doing the podcast here if as long as people still send in send in some voicemails i haven't even done a voicemail we're 20 minutes in thank you guys you guys are amazing um for for still being here and i know you're waiting for that voicemail <laughs> let's just get to it all right where are they welcome to 2023 this is uh it's gonna be a great year you guys it's going to be a great year because that's all we can do is hope and work hard for the future, work hard for better days and work hard for today. Don't think, don't think everything has to be just in the future. It, it really should be living every day the best you can. And, um, that's all I got. You know, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm, I'm going to need chat GPT to, uh, write me, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like, what do you call it? Like, uh, a pep talk. Yeah. Like, write everybody a pep, a pep talk in my style. There you go. All right. Let's get to these voicemails. Um, I'm going to just do a couple and uh, we'll let you guys get, get going for the new year. Wherever you are listening in the car, listening in your truck, driving somewhere, listening in the kitchen, in the living room, maybe you're cleaning the house. Cause I listen to podcasts a lot when I clean the house and uh, maybe you're at work, maybe you're at your desk and with the, the headphones in and you're typing away and whatever it is. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. I heard from a lot of you guys that you, you listen to the podcast and, you, and you've been digging it. When I was doing shows, a lot of people came by the, the merch table and said, I listen to the podcast. Thank you so much. And, and a lot of people listen. They just don't write in a lot. You know, they don't, they're not necessarily paying attention online and that's fine. That's cool. But if you are online, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a line either on one of my personal uh, social media, it's my career TD or on the podcast, my career podcast, uh, or MXPX, MXPXPX on Instagram, MXPX on Twitter. And of course our MXPX Facebook, uh, page and Facebook group, all of that, any of those places join the community. would love to hear from you. Um, I know we had a discord at one point. I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> I don't know. If, maybe it was just like a little too soon or something, but um, you know, that kind of stuff's kind of up to you guys as well. You do, you do you. All right, here we go. Here's, uh, here's your first voicemail. Hey, Mike. Um, I had a pretty quick question for you. I was just curious as a longtime fan that if you've ever felt that you've gotten overshadowed by yourself by also being a 
member of Goldfinger, or at least a tent member of Goldfinger. I don't know the specifics of that. I asked that because I didn't know until quarantine that you were even part of that band. And then I'm like, watching the quarantine videos, I'm like, oh, crap, that's my Carrera. Neat. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just wondering if, like, that, like, has influenced, like, your, like, the way that you go with music. Like, if you focus more on MXPX or Goldfinger or both, or if you're just more of, like, a player of the band of Goldfinger and your lead in MXPX in the, like, songwriting and things like that. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I've been with Goldfinger since 2013. I did a tour with them in Australia. So yeah, we didn't even play the U.S. for a couple years after I'd started playing with the band. Um, to answer your question, simply no. Uh, I don't feel like Goldfinger's ever overshadowed MXPX or me or myself, you know. Um, if anything, it's helped us, but, uh, you know, MXPX has also helped Goldfinger. I mean, we, Goldfinger opened for MXPX, um, in LA, which is Goldfinger's hometown. And we played the Novo, which is, I don't know, 2000 people or something like that. 20, 2300 people, something like that. And sold out MXPX headlined. Um, I did double duty that night. It was great. And I didn't feel like anything was overshadowed. It was, uh, if anything, it was just a cool experience, right, for, for everybody involved, including this, and especially the audience. Uh, but I could see how you could ask or wonder. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, honestly, um, it makes sense to me because MXPX is my band and Goldfinger is John Feldman's band. So they're two different bands, and I play in both, but... My focus, like you asked, my focus is on MXPX and his focus is on Goldfinger. So when he asks, need something done, he'll ask me, but I usually won't do anything unless I'm asked uh, with Goldfinger. But with MXPX, of course, I'm going to be doing this and this and this and whatever because it's my band. So that's the dynamic. It's, it's good. I mean, I, John wants to include everybody and um, he'll like on the on the last couple records, he was like, hey, if anybody wants to write songs or wants to write, not songs, actually, it'll be more like if you want to write a verse or a, this this part, this part needs something, this part needs something, and he'll send in. And uh, then it's kind of up to me. All right, well, let me see, and I'll write some stuff. Um, other times, and most of the time, he'll ask me, hey, can you write this specific part for this bit? And it'll be like the second verse, like I said earlier, or the bridge, and I did that a lot. Um, recently, you know, on the new album, uh, Never Look Back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Um, yeah, and it turned out great. So I'm really happy with how, how Goldfinger came out. And that that Goldfinger record was happening right before I started working on the new MXPX. So it wasn't conflicting, really. It was just like I was, I was maybe writing some M MXPX songs and would just, when John would send me a song and say, hey, can you come up with a second verse for this? And I usually try to do it right away. If I, if I wasn't, if I'm not in the middle of a big project or, so, you know, in the middle of a podcast or something like where I'm literally not able to do it, I like to hit it fresh. Like if I'm, if it's first thing in the morning, not first thing in the morning, but first thing in the morning at the studio here, like when I finally leave my house and <laughs> finally leave my house. Now when I, uh, when I leave my house, I come over here. It's like, to me, that's in the morning, even if it's t noon or something like that. So come over, start writing. Like, that's the kind of thing I'll do. And and that seems to work really well. Like, I, I kind of like doing just a verse because it's, you know, that it's not this big daunting thing where you're like writing a full album or you're writing a whole song. Um, and of course, I like writing songs too, but the amount of pain you have to go through when you're writing songs that are, that are meaningful to you in your life. I mean, a lot of, a lot of guys I know, friends of mine in bands that may, used to write a lot of 
punk songs and pop punk songs and mel- melodic songs, heartfelt songs about their life. Uh, they don't do that as much anymore. They, they sing more about like, you know, like the this happened and then this happened, and which is great too. I love all of that, and I think I've done done it all. But um, really, when it when it's like trying to tap into what you're going through in life, that's when it's a little more painful to do. I think that's my my opinion. But you know, uh, Nikolai from Mill and Colin, he he's like, yeah, I write the songs, and the other guys, you know, like. Eric just does the artwork and, and, you know, each guy has like a different job and and Nikolai writes the songs and, you know, so it's like somebody records, somebody does merch, you know, like it's like all a, you know, a company of, of men, you know, company of men doing, doing a band job or whatever. But, um, but Nikolai says he doesn't even like, stress over songwriting it's easy to him it comes easy it comes naturally um he'll just sit down to do it like it's kind of a job and and he does it and and then he goes on with with his day and it's like whoa i mean come on man maybe that's a little bit lost in translation but it can't possibly be that easy it must be like it feels easy once you're done you know like once you've pulled those ideas out of the ether or whatever it is, it's like a river of ideas. I feel like flowing above us, and 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 when you have time to sit and really reflect and think, you can pull things out. If you're working twenty four seven, if you're constantly stressed about paying your bills and doing this and that, it's really hard to think about anything else. And so I think if that's the case, a lot of your songs are gonna be stressful type songs like we got to get out of this situation this is the worst you know like that kind of thing so um i I really feel like our environment dictates how we write and how and what we can pull out and the ideas we can pull out it's wild it's why it's it's this weird non-physical thing yet you know we all have ideas that that start in our brain start in in here and then become a physical thing like this phone right i didn't invent it but somebody did like what right like it's just insane all right let's let's move on (laughs) hey mike this is stones again from akron ohio just calling in again first of all i'm really excited about the announcement of the free mxpx concerts uh, live streaming on Christmas Eve, 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 Eve that was great. Uh, December 23rd. And the reason being, uh, not only am I excited about the show, but that's actually like a personal holiday uh, for me. Uh, the story behind that is uh, one of the main sound engineer of my growing uh, mega church. And uh, when we started doing Christmas Eve services and couldn't um, accommodate everybody that wanted to, to attend the services on Christmas Eve, we started doing them on Christmas Eve Eve, and because I was there since day one, they jokingly called it Stonesmas. So it was kind of my own holiday. Stonesmas. It's been an ongoing joke since uh, for the last 10 years or so. So it's my own personal holiday, and I get my own personal MXPX concerts uh, as, a, as a present. So I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing, that being said, the other thing I'm calling about, the question I wanted to ask you is, with a band that's been around for 30 years with, with side projects like... Uh, Tumble Down and Arthur and stuff with all the songs that you've written over the years, uh, now that you're doing this live show, if you were being very, very honest about it, what percentage of those songs would you have to say, yeah, I wouldn't be able to play those songs anymore because I don't know the lyrics anymore, I don't know the, I, I don't know the licks anymore, I don't know the notes, I don't know the chords, I can't sing that high, it's too hard, it's too complicated. Out of all the songs that you have, what would you admit uh, being um, how many of those songs you just, you just couldn't do them anymore. Uh, thanks for answering, and have a great holiday. Stones, miss. Dude, that's cool. That's a great story. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of songs I've written over the years, and I don't know really how many have been released versus I've just written. But I've probably written quite quite a, quite a few quite a few. Um, 
more than than I've released, I think. But you're like, how bad are the ones? I mean, some of the ones you've released are pretty bad. So how bad are the ones you don't release? <laughs> I don't know. Real bad. Um, how many could I? How many can I not play because I don't know the licks, the lyrics, the? Well, I'll, I'll be honest. Like when we when we put together our live stream sets, there you know when we were doing between this world and the next about you know one show a month, once every sh month and a half, we would literally be practicing that set because there were so many songs that none of us knew how to play. Like not one, like not nothing. Like I don't know where to start. And so I had to relearn usually about five, six songs a set. And then the rest were like, okay, I know that one. I know New York to Nowhere. Just, I know it. It just takes a minute to like remember the key and remember, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, pay attention. But I don't know that percentage. Let's just say 30, at least 30%, I would have no idea how to play. Probably more than that. I, I would say half of the songs I wouldn't know how to play and at least half, if not more. Um, but a bunch of them I could figure out. Like most of them I would be able to pull off. Um, some of the bass lines I probably would mess up no matter what or change up a little bit. Um, lyrically, I would have to have a lyric sheet for a while practicing in order to like get the lyrics back. But a lot of times you'd be surprised I can get, I can get, those lyrics coming back into my brain and be like, okay, there's some memory here, muscle memory kind of vibes with lyrics. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's a song. If I, if we haven't played it, you know, in, in a while, like a year or more, it usually goes into that, into the cloud where it's not really on the, on your memory bank. It's, it's there, but not really. It has to re download. So, so that's basically me relearning a song and going, yeah, I used to know this song. It's in there. It's not going to be, it's not going to be as hard as re uh, as learning the song as if I'd never heard it, right? Because I have some memory of okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's just a game we play, you know. Like you have to do the work, and it is work to remember these songs, and that's why bands a lot of times don't don't play different set lists they'll play the one set list the whole time also because they want the show to be consistent and they want they want to build on that you know and sometimes you'll it's it hum, humans are human so they'll have bad nights and good nights no matter what and so the more consistent your set list is the more likely it is that you're going to have a good night but you know, it's not always about that either. It's It just depends. It depends on what the situation is. If we're talking punk shows and little punk basements, change it up every night. If you're talking big production, big lights, big venues, you don't change it up quite as much because there's a lot that can go wrong and there's a lot more moving parts and you're just trying to get through. You're just trying to make these people have the best night of their life without demanding their money back <laughs> and then in a punk show it's all about you it's all about the band having the experience and, and I feel like you know when you, the bigger you, you get as a band it becomes less about the band and more about the audience and the audience experience experience I don't know just some thoughts uh, I might not be right who knows but uh it's all about just practicing and, and relearning songs great question though all right let's do two more Mike, what's up, man? I've uh, been a fan for a while. This is uh, Sunny Chow. I am originally from Southern California, specifically Covina. Um, I know you played a, a show at West Covina at some point in your career. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, um, I just want to say I love the podcast, man. I love listening to you and the journey that you've been on. And uh, you know, I got a chance to run merch for you guys at the Crystal Ballroom in Portland, Oregon one year where you guys played with Screech and Weasel. That was pretty rad. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Chris, Chris Barch for setting that up. And uh, it was really cool. I've met you guys a couple of times as well. And uh, anyways, I'll get to the questions here. Um, first question that I've had, I've always kind of wondered is, I know you've appeared on other band songs, you know, but I guess my question is, what is, 
one of your favorite appearances that you've made on somebody else's song. Um, just wondering about that. And, uh, and my other question would be, um, you know, has there ever been a band um, that has opened up for you guys where you knew right off the bat, you were like, damn, this band is going to be special. Um, and wondered, um, and I was wondering which band that was. Anyways, love you guys. Um, love you guys uh, for everything that you guys done and keeping the teenage angst alive in me. Um, I'm now a grown ass man and I still love listening to you guys. I actually have a couple of tattoos um, to represent as well. But anyways, thanks for taking the call and uh, look forward to hearing the answers. Take care. Bye. Sonny Chow, man. Thanks for calling. Yeah, West Covina. We did. We played a party there. That was like, yeah, it was just an impromptu thing. Like, it was like, let's just do this because we shouldn't. We shouldn't do this because we were already kind of getting bigger. We had a little little audience. And um, we played a party. No big deal. It was cool. It was wild. That's the first time I ever heard of Blink-182. Uh, they didn't play. But a band opened for us that played one of their songs. And this was so long ago that they were playing something off Cheshire Cat. And I think it was Carousel or something. And, was, and, and we were just looking at it going, that's cool. Like, whatever that is, that's a cool song. And come to, th you know, find out it was a Blink song. So that was my uh, West Covina story. Met the kid at, at a a show basically and he's like come play my house started writing me letters and stuff uh, now band songs your question your question um my favorite feature that i've been on i can't remember all the features i've been on so i might not even answer this correctly but i'll just give you an answer uh, i really love the atari's feature that i'm on radio um stop your frequency yeah that do a little bit I was going to say, like, maybe Goldfinger, but I'm in the band, so it doesn't really count, even though it's a feature because I'm not the lead singer. I'm the bass player. Um, I do quite a few of those. Um, infinite. I think Standing on the Beach um, off Don't Look Back, the newest Goldfinger record. I think that's on the record. Um, that, that is a badass song, and I, I sing the the chorus on it or no no i sing the um the bridge part that was my favorite thing that i did on the on the goldfinger record um yeah th let's just leave it at that the ataris you know um and then your other question was is there a band that opened for us that we knew would make it and did yes absolutely there's a couple um right away comes to mind is good charlotte they opened for us on a national tour and they just killed it every night, had a great following, um, were amazing live, good dudes. Um, so I knew, I knew they were, they were going to be big and they, you know, good looking twin, you know, brothers. It's just like, okay, this is like, this is perfect for, for media and, you know, marketing and all that. Um, another band, this was earlier, actually. This is er earlier than Good Charlotte, I think. This is New Found Glory. So New Found Glory gave us a demo tape in Fort Lauderdale. West Palm Beach, actually, sorry. We were, it was the same day that I saw Lemmy from Motorhead sitting at the bar of the venue we were playing. We walk in in the morning and he's at the bar drinking because they were playing OzFest the next day. So he was just like in town. And... We're like, what the fuck was Lemmy doing here? Like, what the fuck? Uh, anyway, but later that night, New Found Glory Kids came out and uh, gave us the tape. And we got that tape. And we're like, dude, this is, these guys are awesome. So next time we were in Florida doing a run, we had them open on all those dates. Milk Bar in Jacksonville. Um, the, the, the Chili Pepper in Miami, I think. Um... I don't remember where we played in Orlando those times. It might have been the Firestone or something like that. It was before we played Hard Rock um, and, and and probably Janice Landing. It might have been before we'd played Janice Landing either, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, because this was early, early, early 
um, days. Like they weren't signed yet or anything. Like they were just a literal local band, and we got their demo tape. So yeah, that's that's funny. they they always talk about that. It's it's, it's a great story, and uh, I remember I just remember like being on tour with them at Janice Landing, and they were hanging out with us. So yeah, we did play Janice Landing on that run. Now that I remember it, and we were just like talking to the to Cyrus and and uh, just hanging out with everybody. It was cool. Yeah. All right. Um, one more question for you guys. Hey, Mike. Long time listener of the show. First time caller in. Uh, Rob from Staperville, Illinois. Uh, love your band. Love to you guys. See you guys. Second most band that I've ever seen. Actually, just to pass me. Uh, been seeing Streetlight. Uh, my question is, I just started playing bass again. I used to play when I was younger. And I was debating between going between a percussion bass and a jazz bass. And I was, you know, I did some research online. I kind of saw they're both pretty much similar. It's really up to the player. So I was just curious what your decision was when you started playing bass to go with either, you know, between the jazz or the percussion bass, and what made you decide to go with one over the other? Uh, thanks. Right on, Rob. Yeah, I love talking bass. So for me, I I did play P basses um, back in the day, Fender P basses. But I na I mean, I've played Ernie Ball Stingrays for forever, really, since since the '90s, um, and I still do, and I love them. So. It's it's all the same answer basically. So, what it comes down to is literally feel, um, aesthetic, look like for, sure, aesthetic and look, and then feel and how it plays and how it sounds. All three of those things: look, playability, and tone. Um, I found P bass to be a better tone than the jazz bass because it was more modern for me. Love the tone of the P bass. And the P bass, depending on what year, and these are all different. Every year, every instrument is going to feel slightly different. But um, I've got some 70s, like late 70s P basses, and they'll have fatter necks. And I love the fatter neck. And most jazz basses have a really thin neck, especially down towards the nut and the head. And that, to me, is just my hands are too big. I can't deal with a small, a small neck. So... I've always gravitated towards P basses. They have a little bit wider neck. And then the Stingrays have a similar neck uh, as a P bass, even nicer feeling. And another thing that I love about P basses uh, versus the jazz bass is the simplicity and the, the look of it. I, I like the look of the P bass. The jazz bass looks a little funky to me. And on top of all that, I would say taking the cake of course, I'm going to say this. I'm a little biased, but my Music Man Stingray, my Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray, all of those basses uh, aesthetically look so much better to me than any other bass. I love the the three knobs and then the one on the other side on the, the tuning pegs. Uh, I love that. Uh, I love, aside from aesthetics, though, um, I would say the Stingray has a very balanced weight distribution. And that's something I never liked about P basses or fenders in general. Fender, not guitars, excuse me. Guitars don't really deal with this as much. Some of them do. But the basses I've found are very head heavy and the body is light. And so you've got, you've got your head always going down like this. And sure, you can get used to it. I had a bass. I had this P bass that did that. And it was just like, I just got rid of it. But I like that the Stingrays are just so balanced so well balanced and well made that they just sit on you like a rock like like a light rock hopefully um and, and i just love it i love it i love the feel and the and the and the, the durability of the stingrays so but if you're gonna choose between a p bass and a jazz bass and you're like no to stingrays that's fine i personally would go p bass um but like I said, you have to play both of them because you might love the jazz bass and there's nothing wrong with that. Mark Hoppus loves jazz basses and I don't at all, at all, but nothing wrong with it. It sounds fine. You know, it sounds good when he plays. So he's a good bass player. Um, 
yeah, that's it. I guess I've reached the end of my my um, my base comment. I might have to ask Chat GPT what the differences are from a P base and a jazz base, but I'm just speaking from personal personal thoughts. I've thought about this before, believe me. You know, like thought about P, P bases, jazz bases, and why I like P bases better. And it's always come down to the neck, the weight distribution, and then of course the weight distribution on certain P bases is is terrible, and certain ones are better. So depending on the year that you have, if you have a newer P base, if you have a Mexican version, chances are it's going to be very off balanced. If you have an older P base, something in the 70s, I don't know about 80s, I don't have an 80s base, but I think that's going to be a little bit better distributed. Um, the base that I used for slowly going the way of the Buffalo was a P base. And I used that in Europe when we toured with Bad Religion. That was the only tour I ever did without a P base. and Or sorry, with a P base. It was the only tour I did without a Stingray. Because by the time we started our... Uh, first tour in 1995, I had bought my do 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 my P base or sorry my Stingray, and um, I got the P base later for recording. Um, Steve Kravak was definitely instrumental in me getting that particular base, um, but I got it up here in Seattle. I, I bought it in at Al's Guitarville in Seattle. Great spot. Um, yeah. So, like I said, I'm a little biased. When it comes to basses, I love Ernie Ball. I love the Music Man Stingrays. I love my my Carrera Artist Series. Um, but I'm a bass player. So, I mean, I, I like all types of basses and all types of feels. And it just kind of depends on what you're playing as well. But um, have fun with it. Enjoy it. All right, you guys. Welcome to 2023. While it's so fresh, so new, uh, I feel like let's just stay positive. Let's not even worry about like, like what could happen later this month. Let's just go with today, all right? Go with today and feel good about it and go do some good work. If you're, if you're not feeling motivated, maybe you're burnt out. Maybe you're, you're already doing too much, but hopefully you got a little chance to just chill a little bit over the holidays and, and, um, geez, I mean, I don't even want to, I don't want to keep talking because the more I keep talking, the more things I think about that I don't want to bring up on this first episode of 2023. It just sounds weird to say it, but yes, we are in the year 2023. Wow. Welcome. All right. Call me 360 eight three zero six 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 zero shout out to bob mcknight i love you buddy i hope you're doing well and uh shout out to your family and to your podcast the bob and katie show um i'm sure they're going to be rocking and rolling in 2023 as well um all right you guys let me know you can always call in and if you don't want to call in and leave a message you're really that shy you can always ask me a question on the facebook message group uh the facebook uh podcast group that's probably the best way to do it all right until next time peace